Good morning, everybody. Man, good to see everybody this morning. Good to see everybody joining us online. We know we got a good crowd there, a good crowd in here on this cool Sunday morning. But we pray that you've come to do one thing, whether you're gathering in this room or rooms all across the nation, that you've come to do one thing and one thing only. And that's to worship the King of Kings. I pray that you've come expecting this morning. Uh, if you're new with us, we just want to say welcome. We are so glad that you're here. And uh, man, once you're here, you done been greeted, you're just part of the family. So just fit right in. Uh, you're not going to scare anybody off by raising your hands or shouting. Or if you want to have a running spell, we'll run with you. So uh, man, we're just glad that you're here. I want to start us off this morning just by, just by reading a, a quick psalm and just to get our mindsets in the place ready to worship this morning. Psalm chapter 13. And this is what the psalmist said. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious concerns within me? Agony in my mind every day. How long will my enemy dominate me? Consider me and answer, Lord my God. Restore brightness to my eyes, otherwise I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have triumphed over him, and my foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But listen to what, how the psalmist ends this in verses 5 and 6. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. Amen. This morning we can come no matter where we've been, lay everything aside, even though many may feel like we're getting crushed by this world, we can still come because can I remind you, God's still faithful. God's still good. And this morning He is worthy of our praise. Let's pray and prepare our hearts to worship the King. Father, we love You. We just thank You so much for this time that we have, that we set aside each and every week, Lord, to gather as the body of Christ. And I pray that this morning, Lord, that we know that worship is not an event. Worship is not because we gather. Lord, worship is a lifestyle. And I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that today we would be able to worship You in spirit and truth. Lord, that we would truly just lift our voices to the one the King above all kings, the name above all names. And may you get all the honor, praise, and glory. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here this morning. Blow our minds, change our lives. And we ask all this in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship together, church.
Amen. So looking at these words, I mean, we've sung this next song a lot, but man, if these words can ring more true in this time of day, in this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there's only one salvation we believe. So I hope that you don't sing this song the way that you've always sung it this morning. I hope that you can look into and through these lyrics and see the relevance that God's trying to bring to us today to make this current. And just, just refresh in our minds what we stand on, our foundation. Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit. 
God raised him to life again. Do you believe that we serve a risen Savior? I don't serve no dead Mohammed. I don't serve no dead Buddha. I serve a living Savior that's alive, that's a well, that the Bible tells me that right now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me and you. Just you know what that means when, when he's making intercession? That means right now that you are on his mind. That right now in heaven and the throne room of God that Jesus is going on my behalf on your behalf to the Father because you are on His mind that should make an old dried up Baptist shout and run this morning to know that in the throne room of heaven they're just not sitting there talking about God and His glory which there are angels sitting there saying holy, holy, holy and they are because God is worthy but listen in the midst of all that my Savior that died for my sins that took up the wrath of God on His self that I deserve is right now in heaven sitting beside the Father and saying, hey, let me tell you a little bit of something about Rodney. Hey, let me tell you a little bit of something about Chad. Hey, let me, let me tell you something about Brock, about Brady, about Connor, about Jimmy. About Let me tell you something because you are on His mind. That should just, just, woo! That should just make you excited this morning to know that not just in heaven, that in an earthly realm, that somebody's thinking about me. We know it's Valentine's Day, and, and you know there's a lot of people thinking about other people on days like today. But just to think about, it, we take it out of this realm and take it to heaven. And this morning, right now, in this moment, that you are on Jesus's mind. Praise God. But I want us to go back to, the, to that to that bridge. Jordan, can you throw that bridge up there for me? Because there's one thing when we were singing through it that last time, it really stuck out. It's right in the middle. It says, let the church live loud. And when we were singing that, you know what I could hear? I could hear them, but I couldn't hear you. And if we won't live it loud in here, I promise you we won't live it loud out there. So I want to ask these guys, man, let's run through that bridge one more time. And I don't want us just to run through it as a word. I want you to shout to the rooftops. I want our neighbors over yonder to go, what in the world is going on up in that building over there? It looks like the, the, the shingles or the, the tins fixed to fall off that place. Because listen, if we choose to get loud in this place and we allow God to just fire us up, I promise you it's a whole lot easier to go out. You'll walk out the door and you'll see the sign above the door. What's it say? You are now entering your mission field. Because this ain't where we come to get saved, I mean, you can because God's good, but this is where we come to get equipped. This is where we come as believers in Jesus Christ to get equipped, to get fired up, to, to get stirred, to encourage one another, to provoke one another to good works. Why? So we can go out there and do the work. And just like the song said, we need to live loud. But listen, I know this as a fact, just as a pastor and what I've seen over my years, if you won't worship loud, you won't, you won't live it out loud. So let's think about these words one more time as we go through let the lost be found. Anybody in here glad that there's one day you was lost, but thank God by His mercy and by His grace that in your murk, that in your muck, that in your clay, that in your ditch, on your way to hell, that Jesus... You was on His mind and He reached down in that moment whether it's in your house, in a car, at revival, at Bible school, wherever it might be, and He reached way down the old song. He had to reach way down. But listen, He was willing to reach. If I was willing to say, Here I am, Lord, help me, save me. And He reached down and saved this old country boy on December the 8th, 2002. Your story. But listen, aren't you glad that the lost can still be found? That's the reason we need to live it loud because there's still men and women, boys and girls on their way to hell this morning. And if we don't live it loud, can I tell you, the world's pretty loud. You know why Satan wants the world to be loud? To try to drown us out. But it's time, because I promise you this, Satan's going to bring all the hell he can bring with him in your life. But guess what? It's time for us to bring all the heaven we got with us and go into the battle. Because I know the one that the Bible says at Armageddon, when he opens his mouth and speaks, I'll be there sitting on a horse looking like Roy Rogers, and I'll be looking real good in the saddle. But I want to tell you one thing. You know what? In that day, I'm going to have to pull a sword. I ain't going to have to pull a gun. I'm just going to sit there because the Bible says that when Jesus gets there, he opens his mouth and by the power of just his word, the same word that brought you into existence, the same word that hung the stars and the moon is the same word that will defeat the enemy for good and then we will reign and live with Jesus forever. 
So we can be loud because we've got all of heaven backing us. Jesus, You are on His mind this morning. And right now, I pray that in this moment, that when you leave this room today, that you can ask God, God, how was my worship today? And I pray that He can say, Son, daughter, well done. But guess what? You're the only person that controls that this morning. Nobody else can worship for you. Just like nobody else can pray for you to get saved. Nobody else. It's your walk. It's your worship. Make the Father happy this morning. I remember when I used to play ball. I don't know where that was coming from. Y'all going to get like four sermons today. I'm just fired up this week. It's been a good week, y'all. I remember when I was, when I was a little boy and I played baseball. And my dad would be on the on the sidelines, my mama and my mama, you, everybody knew my mama was there because mama was always yelling because she, she's loud. But the one thing I remember, when I'd do something, when I'd get a hit or I'd make a good play, I'd hear my dad, Chad. Even though my mama, you could always hear my mama. You didn't have to listen for mama. Mama, mama, I love you. I know you're watching this morning. But, but, but you could hear mama. Everybody knew mama was there. But when I'd do something, Jimmy, I would, these are the words I'd hear. That's my boy. That's my son. Be what my daddy would say. This morning in my worship, I want God the Father to look down at me. And this is between you if you want it for you or not. I pray that you do. And I want Him to look down from heaven this morning. Jesus done been bragging about you, talking about you, making intercession for you where you messed up this week, saying, hey, it's all right. I got Him covered. I done paid that. I got it. But I want him this morning to look down. I want him to say, that's my boy. Ladies, I want him to look down on you and say, that's my daughter. Look at her. I'm so proud of her. Look at her. She's not ashamed. She don't care what anybody else thinks because she's focused on me. And when we truly get focused on the Savior, we can live it loud. We can worship loud. Listen, it's time. It's high time the church started being a whole lot of the world. We're losing a generation. We're losing our nation because the church has sit down, been passive, and been quiet. It's time to raise up and rise up, church. Father, I pray in these next few moments as we continue to worship, God, that you'd be able to look at this little place in Lula, Georgia this morning, that you would see men and women, boys and girls, and that the Father would be looking down and saying, that's my boy, that's my girl, that's my son, that's my daughter. God, it's up to us. And Father, may we leave here today feeling your spirit tell us well done because we were obedient to you. Father, move in this place. In Jesus' name, let's continue to work.
want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. Sing that again. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord, one more time. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I
Amen. The good thing about that last little phrase that we sung is the Scripture tells us that if you seek me with all your heart, He didn't say we'll play a game of hide and seek. He didn't say if you seek me with all my heart, you may find me around the corner. He says if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So this morning I asked the question while we were singing it, do you mean that? Because if you mean that, you're going to be seeking for God with all your heart. And you're going to know Him more. And I've told you before, the more you get to know Him, the more you want to serve Him. The more you get to know Him, the more you want to worship Him. The more you get to know Him, it changes you. Let's pray and prepare our hearts to receive this morning. Father, Lord, thank You so much for this wonderful, wonderful time of worship. We thank You that Your Spirit is here. And Father, I know that He just don't show up just to show up. He just don't show up to see what's going on. That He shows up to change lives, to convict us, to convert us, to move us closer to Jesus. And God, we just pray right now an anointing over Your Word as it go, fixing to go out. May our hearers, ears, may we have ears to hear this morning. But God, not only that, Lord, may we be obedient and go be doers of what You call us to do. Holy Spirit, Continue to move in our midst. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much. You may be seated. Uh, if you got your Bibles, turn with us. Join us in Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. Uh, if you've been walking with us, we've been walking through the New Testament in 2021. And uh, we just picked up in Acts last week. We hit chapter 1 and we picked up in chapter 2 this week and, and read through chapter 6 as a family. Uh, if you've not been a part of that, uh, there. if you're in this room, there is uh, the reading plans out in the foyer. Grab you one of those. It's got the dates on it. It's not too late to jump in. If you're joining us online and you would like a copy of that, just send us an email at libertybcfamily at gmail.com and we'd be glad to email you a copy so you and your family could join us as well. Well, first off, I want to say this. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope, oh yeah, yeah. My, my Valentine, I asked her this morning if she would be my Valentine for the 25th year in a row. And guess what, y'all? She said yes. So I want to say hey to my sweetheart. She's at home this morning with the girls. So she's not in the room with us this morning. Uh, just uh, wouldn't feel a little well. Not, not no sickness or symptoms like that. Don't, don't everybody, everybody gets freaky. You know when you say somebody wouldn't feel well. Just wouldn't feel well this morning. So uh, just want to say hey to my sweetie and that I love her and thank her for 25 years straight. Y'all can y'all believe that? That she said yes to being my Valentine. That takes a lot of courage and... Uh, and a lot of want to, because I promise you, living with me ain't easy, but so glad. So happy Valentine's Day to you. And, and if you look at the bulletin and you kind of see, what we're going to be talking about today is devoted. Uh, and it's not going to, this is not going to be a relationship sermon. I know it looks like it, and you can kind of get, oh, he's going to be talking about uh, love. And yes, we're going to be talking about love, because who is love? God is love, right? When we come in here, we're going to talk about God. So every Sunday, we're going to talk about love uh, in different ways. But what I want to talk to you about is what we're going to see right out of Acts chapter number 2. And I want us to all ask the question as we're walking through this, am I truly 
devoted in these areas that we see. So i uh, give you a little background just in case you're joining us and you don't know, you've never opened the Bible. So what we see in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, Jesus has just, he's been resurrected. And in Acts chapter 1, you see that man, he ascends to heaven. But before he does, he tells his disciples to go and make disciples, right? And he tells them where to do that. But then he tells them to go back in Jerusalem and wait. And I'm going to send you the helper, which is the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're glad he showed up this morning because if he's not here, then we just, you know, we just might as well go play golf or something. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. But we know, then you jump in the first of Acts chapter number two, and you see what's called the day of Pentecost. It is a day when the Holy Spirit come down and anointed those first disciples, those 120 that were waiting in that room, and it come out, and we know that they went out, man, and Peter preached, and man, we see 3,000 people get saved on the day of Pentecost. Praise God, amen? And we say, man, wouldn't that be awesome to see? I say, why don't we see it anymore? You know, just can I tell you what? The Holy Spirit hadn't changed. The same Holy Spirit that anointed Peter and John and James and all of them is the same Holy Spirit we have. Uh, so, but I really believe that we can walk through this text today, and I'm hoping to challenge you, no matter where you're at in your faith, to see what's going on. So we're going to pick up at the end of chapter number 2 and verse 42 is where we're going to start our reading at. But we're going to look at the early church and really see what the foundations that these new believers had. So I want you to remember where we're picking up. There's 3,000 new believers. Man, they just freshly given their life to the Lord. They haven't went to seminary. They ain't been sitting in Sunday school their whole life. They don't know nothing about what's going on. All they know is, is what they're being told and they believed in Jesus. They've been saved. And, and then we see this right here. And I, listen, I think this is something that us as the church has missed. Not just liberty, but the church in general. We need to go back and look at the biblical foundations on what the church started. What were they devoted to? What were they determined to? And I believe if we can do that as individuals, it's going to change some things. But it's up to us to make that decision. So I hope we can see what God started right there in Acts chapter number 2 and just see how God moved in them and all around them. And listen, I want to tell you, God wants to do the same thing today. So, if you found your place in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 42, say, Speak. I want the Word of God to speak to us this morning. If you're online, you can put speak in there. I like to go back and look at those comments. Uh, so, man, be, be engaged with us online as well. So, verse number 42, this is what God's Word says. If you don't have your copy of God's Word, we'll have it on the screen for you. Verse 42 says this, talking of the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs, and many signs were being performed through the apostles. Verse 44. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day... They devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Holy Spirit, blow our minds this morning. Speak in Jesus' name. Amen. So really, y'all going to be surprised. I've only got one main point today. <gasps> but I got like 10 like other points. But I just got one main point, And it's really this, because it's where we want to focus. We're going to focus on this one verse for the majority uh, of our time together today. And that's just simply verse number 42. And this is, this is if, I, if I give it a thing, it's they devoted themselves. It said they devoted themselves. Now some, some versions, we use the words they steadfastly did this. So whenever I see a vast kind of difference in words when I because I because I look at different translations and because I try to want to understand the scriptures. So what I do when I get a devoted and a steadfastly, what do I do? Well I'm going to go to the original language, look at the Greek and pull it up and see what that original word meant. So y'all y'all ready for me to say this Greek word? Yes. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, y'all ready? Say yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. The Greek word for the word devoted or the word steadfastly is prokashiakio. And you can go, you can go to blues, blueletter.letter.com and pull that up and listen to it and get the correct pronunciation. Because when he said it, I go, 
Yeah, I ain't going to be able to say that one. So, uh, so I'm not, uh, that, that is not correct pronunciation, I promise you. But go to blueletterbible.com, free resource for you to download. You can pull up the Greek there and hear it for what it really sounds like. But this is the important part, right? It's not important how it sounds. But it's the important part is what it means. This is what the word devoted, the word steadfastly, in this verse meant in the Greek, meant in the original language. It meant this. To adhere to one, to be his adherent, to be devoted or constant to one, to be steadfastly attentive unto, to give unremitting care to a thing, to continue all the time in one place, to persevere and not to faint, to show oneself cor- courageous for to be in constant readiness for one waiting on constantly. And I know that's a lot of words, we could use, but you kind of see the theme there? To me, uh, the first word that came to my mind when I read those is that's somebody that's sold out to something. That's somebody that said, man, I'm there, I'm on it, I'm with it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not straying from it. I'm putting all my focus on that thing. So what I want us to look at this morning is what is that thing that they were devoted to. I want to show you four things, and you see them, I ain't going, it ain't, it's right out of the text. Four things that the early church was devoted to. And this is what I believe today. No matter if you're part of our Liberty family or whatever church family you're part of, listen, it ain't about being devoted to a program. It ain't about being devoted to, to something. And don't get me wrong, programs are good. They help give us structure. It's not being devoted to a curriculum. It's not being devoted to a preacher. Listen to me. It's about you. Everybody say me. me. It's all about you being devoted to the Lord in these four things. And I truly believe it's all my heart. If we as believers individually say, I will be devoted to these four things that the early church was was devoted to, it's going to change you, it'll start changing your family, and it'll start changing our churches across the land. But listen, the good thing about it, or maybe the bad thing about it, it's up to you. It's up to you. So let's look at these four things. Uh, I want to give you the book definition of the word devoted. The book definition of the word devoted meant this, very loving or loyal, so a good word for Valentine's Day, right? But it also meant this, to concentrate on a particular pursuit, occupation, a purpose or a cause. Uh, to concentrate on an occupation, purpose, or cause. Can I tell you that there is no greater purpose or cause than the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no greater purpose that we should be focused in on, that we should be concentrated on. But what we see in the text, we see right in the beginning, verse 42, it says, they devoted themselves. We see it was a personal choice. We don't see in here that it says that Peter made them devote themselves. That Peter told them that y'all have to do this. The only thing Peter told them how to do was when they said, oh my goodness, How must we get saved? And Peter says, repent and be baptized. That's all Peter told them to do. And then they repented and got baptized. And listen, but then we see that they themselves... The reason they did it was because when they really got saved, when they really, Jesus really got a hold of them, I've told you before, when Jesus gets a hold of you, He changes you. He changes the things you want. Now, we may slide away, we may backslide, we may get away from the Lord, but I'm telling you, if we're truly a child of God, there will be some chastisement. There will be some correction. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but there will be correction in Christ Jesus because He wants you to look more like Him, not more like the world. And listen, when He truly gets a hold of us, or we truly, maybe we've fallen away and we start getting back right with the Lord, Listen, we're going to want to be devoted to Him. And they said, they determined in their heart that they were going to be determined to these things for the Lord. So let's take a look at this. This is one verse for a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll, I promise you we'll get through all of them, okay, before 12 o'clock. Oh, man, my time's going away quick. i got to preach fast. Y'all ready? Say go. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm not going to go fast. No, yeah, yeah, hey, y'all ain't got nowhere to go. Y'all ain't got nowhere to be? We'll still, we'll still beat the Methodists to the bar, okay? To the, the, the food bar. To the food bar. We Baptists, y'all. We don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. I've got to take this, and this is water. You can, see, you can see my jug of water over here. Boy, that went south in a hurry, Chad. That, 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 that was one of, them, one of them moments where just, yeah, yeah, our guests will never be back now. Okay, so, uh, all right. We're... we're I meant to say the buffet, but for some reason, you know, they got the bu- Okay, I'm just shut up, Eric. You're digging yourself a deeper, you digging yourself a deeper hole. Y'all hush online. I know y'all putting in comments on there too. All right, so so listen. All right, so here we go. All right, everybody, aren't you? Aren't you glad we can laugh? Aren't you glad that we don't have to come in here and everybody just be in a suit and tie and everybody just had to sit down and be quiet and shut up until we're done and then go home? Aren't you glad that we can laugh? Ain't that what family's supposed to do? Laugh, have a good time together, to learn from each other, uh, even. 
learn from stupid people's words. I'll tell y'all, man, I, I say stupid stuff all the time. And my church said, Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to say, well, maybe they just don't think it's Maybe they're stupider than me. And they don't think it's stupid. <laughs> Trust me, I hear it all the time. I can't believe you said that. And I'll usually say, y'all heard me say it. I'll usually say, I didn't say that. And that gummit, we got replay now. So they can rewind it and show me I said that. All right, so let's jump into God's Word. I'm glad we can have a good time in, in, the, Lord, in the house of the Lord this morning. All right, so this is what I want you to ask you. These questions, there'll be four things we're fixing to cover. Simply this, if you're taking the notes, writing something down. I didn't put this in the notes in the bulletin, but I want you to write this down if you're writing something down. Am I devoted? And then we're going to give you these four things that we see the early church devoted to. And these questions are between you and, you and the Lord. But can I tell you, the Lord already knows the answer. And really deep down, you already know the answer too. But I'm praying that the Holy Spirit this morning brings some conviction. So let's, let's walk through them really quick. Number one, we must be devoted to the Word. We must be devoted to the Word of God. You say, where do you see that? It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I want to remind you uh, that they didn't have the New Testament back then, all right, y'all? That, that, that's who we're reading about. We're reading about them. So they didn't have this. So what they were having to go on was the Old Testament and the apostles' teaching of what Jesus did. Uh, they were having to teach. So, they, so really, if you put it into our context for us to be able to apply this to our lives, it means that they were devoted to getting in the Word. They were devoted to being taught taught the Word. They were devoted to getting in the Word on their own. Because listen, what do we see over and over? They got together, right? They were intentional to go there themselves so they could hear the Word of God. Listen, it's much easier for me and you today. We have a copy right here. you got a copy on your phone. Uh, most of you probably got ten copies in your house, strode out everywhere that's got dust sitting on them. But listen, I want to tell you, listen, it's up to us to be devoted to the Word. And I want to share this with you. Man, y'all going to make me preach fast today, but I'm glad I'm south and I talk fast, so hopefully y'all can understand, all right? So listen, if you got this, if you want to turn with me really quick over to Psalm 119, I want to share these words with you, man. Uh, I read through the whole book of Psalm 119, eight verses at a time back in November and December, and some of you went on that journey with me. But, uh, man, as it's over and over talking about the Word of God. But I wanted to show you in just these first uh, 16 verses the importance that the psalmist tells us about us being devoted to the Word. Listen to what it's says, how happy are those, verse number one, how happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk according to what? The Lord's instruction. Happy are those who keep His decrees and seek Him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in His ways. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. And listen to verse number five. If only my ways were committed. Man, ain't that me and you? Man, I, I want to follow the Lord. I want to get in the Word. I want to be devoted. But man, if only if my ways were committed. Can I tell you? Your ways can be committed, but it's a choice for you to wake up. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. It's probably going to shock you all again. There's mornings I wake up and I don't want to go get in the Word of God. There's mornings that my alarm clock goes off at 412 and I want to go turn that thing off and go back to bed. There's mornings that I just don't want to get up and do it. And you're saying, you're a preacher. You're right, I am. But I want to remind you this. Don't put no title on me. I'm just flesh and blood like you are. I live in this flesh just like you do. But listen... This is why I get up. Oh, man, this got all over me. I about had a running spell at home this week. And I, and I run anyway, but, so it wouldn't have been nothing strange. But, 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 but I almost had a spell when I was in there studying and getting ready. And this is when the Lord spoke to me. And I said, man, why do I get up and do that? How, you know, I tell people I get up and I do it. And, and I get up and I go do it even when I don't want to. And this is why. This is the only answer I can come up. Because I know God's going to be there. So if I know God's going to be there, I want to be there. Because I want to be in His presence. Because I've told you before, when you truly get in the presence of a holy God, you can't leave the same. When you get up in the morning, you get in the presence of God, it's at your dining room table, in your prayer closet. Listen, you should come out of there different. If you ain't coming out of there different, stay in there a little longer because you truly ain't got in the presence. Listen to me. I want to tell you, we've said it before, you keep getting into the Word until the Word gets into you. And when it starts getting into you, He's going to start transforming you and you're going to want to be devoted. You're going to want to be committed. And you're going to get up and you want to go there. Why? Maybe you don't feel like it. Maybe you had some bad burritos last night. Maybe you've been sick all day. But listen, when you truly know that God wants to meet you over there, it'll make you get your tail out of gear and get your tail in gear and get out of bed and go and meet Him where He is at. 
But then keep listening to what the psalmist said. Verse number 6. Then I would not be ashamed when I think about your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Never abandon me. How can a young man keep his way pure? Young men, young women in the room. And I want to say this. Old men, old women in the room. You listen to this. How does an old man, old woman keep their way pure? Middle-aged woman, middle-aged man keep their way pure? The same way a young man keeps his way pure. Listen to the answer. Pretty straight. Keep it. By keeping your word. Straight to the point. I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. Man, don't it just bless you to know that the psalmist even struggled, that he even struggled keeping it, because he didn't even have to say, God, I need you to help me to not wander from where I need to go. It helps me to know that the Apostle Paul, he said, man, I do the things that I know I'm not supposed to, and I don't do the things that I know I'm supposed to. It helps me to know that the men and women that were in God's Word, that they had the same struggles, the same fights, the same battles that me and you have. But listen, we see them personally persevere. That's why they wrote about in the Bible. Because they ain't wrote about all their distractions. We get to see some of them. But what we get to see is even though that was going on. Even though Paul said, I had a thorn in my flesh that I asked God to take from me. But God said this, my grace is sufficient for you. And this morning I want to tell you, no matter what your situation, no matter what your problem, if you'll get in the Word of God, if you'll stick to it, and you go meet Him where He's at, His grace is sufficient for you too. There's grace for that. He said, I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Lord, may you be blessed. Teach me your statutes with my lips. I proclaim all the judgments from your mouth. I receive in the way revealed by your decrees as much as in all the riches. And listen to verse number 15. I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I will delight in your statutes and I will not forget your Word. It's not just about reading it, guys. It's about getting in it. It's about meditating. It's about thinking on it. Like, like an old cow chewing on cud, right? It's about maybe the old, old cow regurgitate that stuff up. I'm about to make somebody lose their breakfast. But it'll regurgitate that stuff up and it'll chew on it for a little while. Because why? It was just better the second time when it comes around. You know what happens sometimes when you get in God's Word in the morning? You say, man, that was a good thought right there. But then in the middle of the day, the old Holy Spirit regurgitates that thing up, Chad. You start gnawing on that thing at lunch. You start thinking about really what that meant and what God was saying. And you about have a spell, you shout at the lunchroom table and all your co-workers look at you crazy and they what in the world's wrong with him? And better what's wrong with her? But listen, it's a better the second time around when you start mulling on it and you start really meditating. You start thinking about it. Because why? Because when you really start meditating, you're getting deeper and you're telling God, hey, that just ain't a once a time morning thing I want from you. I want you to speak to me all day long. And the deeper you get in, the richer the water is. Anybody ever draw, any draw water out of a well? I mean, truly drew. Oh, man, ain't that some good cold water you get out of that well? Man, that's some good stuff. The deeper you go, the refreshing, more refreshing it is. Somebody will write that down. The deeper you go, the more refreshing it is in the Word of God. Man, I got a low one. Whew, I got a low one. All right, here we go. Y'all, y'all hang on. Take your seatbelt, buckle in. All right, here we go. Number two, the second thing we see that we must be devoted to is the fellowship. Said so they were devoted to the fellowship. This is one that the church, in America especially, has slacked on overall. It's being devoted to the fellowship. Listen to what Scripture says. Romans 12, 10 tells us this. To love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing them honor. We need to be trying to outdo our brothers and sisters by showing love to one another. Listen to what John uh, 13, 35 says. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you what? Love one another. If you're having fellowship with one another. Listen, it's the reason we have these gatherings. It's the reason we do small groups. It's the reason we have events. It's the reason we serve together, work together. Listen, the one thing I love about it, we, we had a little men's thing here a couple months ago. And listen, they just three of us showed up. But can I tell you, and we worked. And we worked hard that day and got some stuff done. But you know what? In the middle of that working hard, man, we had some of the sweetest fellowship. It was just some of the nice things, just, just talking to one another, picking on each other, just having, having a good time of fellowship while we work. Can I, can I remind you? It's got, for you to have fellowship, that means you got to get together with other people. Y'all, I mean, I'm just, just, just being serious. You, you know, you, you hard to fellowship by yourself. <laughs> uh, that'd be a only ship, I guess. I don't know. That's a weird illustration. But listen, a fellowship, uh, fellows, right? There's other people with you. And we can't can't forsake the assembling ourselves together. Y'all know that verse, man. We repeat it over and over. But we must be, listen to me, not just come to a fellowship every now and then, not just come to a gathering every now and then, just not come to a small group whenever we feel like it, not just come to something and serve when we feel like it. What did it say they were doing to it? They were devoted to it. That means they showed up even when they didn't want to. 
Y'all got quiet. But then thirdly, we see this. And this is different. It may look the same, but it's different. Number three, it says this. They were devoted to do life together. Doing life together happens outside of this building. For you to truly do life with somebody, it's for a man you're talking throughout the week. Your families are getting together. You're, you're man, loving on one another. Hey, listen, this is the way that, that things get... No, you know, you know, as churches grow and things get bigger, the pastor can't be everywhere. The pastor can't do everything. But it's in those small groups with people you're doing life with. Those are the ones that's going to be there for you, that's going to help you. There's so many people feel alone. Why? Because they're not doing life with anybody. They got the Lone Ranger mentality. They don't think they do, but they really do. And they're not doing life with anybody. Because can I tell you? It makes a difference. It helps hold you accountable. It helps encourage you. It helps pour into your life when you need it. And but on the other end, you get to pour into other people's lives when they need it. That's what doing life together. Uh, we know Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let me, let me just read it right out of the Word of God. And it says, now let us watch out for one another. Did you see that? You said, we, we, this, is, this is the verse going into not, to not forsake the assembling together. But listen to what he said before then. Let us watch out for one another. Why? Why well, I said it a while ago. So we can provoke each other to do good works. So when, when somebody comes in to me and we're doing life together, and I said, man, I was struggling today. Man, I was tempted in, in that thing that tempts me and I almost wanted to you. That way I can give them a good swift kick, poke in the hiney, and tell them, don't do that. That's why you're supposed to call me. Let me know so we can walk through it. That's what provoking one another to good works. Listen. Because I tell you what happens when you don't do life with other Christians and other believers. Let me tell you who's provoking you. It ain't something from the Holy Spirit. You're being provoked to do things of the world. You're being provoked to do things of the flesh. And that's the reason you keep falling into it is because you don't, you're not doing life with anybody that's provoking you to good works. We must do life together. But listen, Galatians 6 2 tells us this to carry one another's burdens in this way. You will fulfill the law of Christ. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens to help each other out. Listen, doing life together is more than a gathering, it's life. That's why it's called doing life together. It ain't called doing church together, it's called doing life together. But some people think just showing up on a Sunday in their, in their church is just enough, they're good enough. That's what, mm -mm. doing life together. And you want to do life with people that will go with you and that will grow with you. Because it's real easy just to do life with people, just meet, have a little Bible study and think you're doing life with them. No. Doing life with people, other believers, is they go with you where you go and you go with them where they go in our walks, in our life. But they're not only going, they're growing with you. We're encouraging one another. So we must do life together. And listen, can I just say this? You say, well, man, I just ain't got that group of people to do life with. Can I tell you where to meet them at? I'm going to help somebody out right here. I'm going to tell you where to meet them at. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll tell you where you meet them at. You meet them in the fellowship. You meet them by getting in a small group. You meet them by coming here on Sundays and gathering. That's how you meet those people. You get to know them. But if you're not coming to the fellowship, you're not going to have many people to be able to do life with. So it takes it all. Then fourthly, we're to the last one. Y'all ready? The last one. And this is one, man, the church fails at. It really does. They were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to praying. And I, and I, and I was read through this and I was thinking about it, man. I just wrote these down. And I think there's three ways that we need to pray. Three ways that we need to pray. And I think I can back it up biblically. Number one, we need to pray individually. You need to be praying. You need to have your quiet time where you're talking to the Lord and He's pouring into you and, and you're bringing your needs to Him and, and you're, you're bringing your concerns to Him. Listen, Philippians 4, 6 says this, don't worry about anything, but in everything through what? Prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Uh, also, it tells us down in Luke 5, 15 and 16, listen, but the news about Him even spread anymore and large crowds would even come together to hear him to be healed of their sickness yet yet he often withdrew to deserted places and prayed we see Jesus our Lord and Savior he even took the time out of his busy schedule did you notice what it said they were doing there was constantly people man he got popular they knew who he was there was constantly people wanting him constantly people wanting him to do something for them constantly people around him even though man he had you think your schedule's busy think about if you had to walk everywhere you had to go 
And what Jesus had to do, y'all, he had to walk everywhere he had to go. He, he couldn't just jump in a car, grab an Uber, and jump on a plane. He had to walk everywhere he went, right? I mean, he might have rode Peter's back every now and then. I don't know. Peter may have gave him a piggyback ride. The scriptures don't tell us that. I don't know. But listen, but either way, Peter was walking, so either way, he's probably going to get there slower because Peter's probably running his mouth. Uh, but anyway, but listen, but, but if Jesus could make time in his busy schedule to get away from everybody and go personally pray, can I just say... You can too. You can too. We need to pray individually. Secondly, we need to pray for one another. We need to pray for one another as believers and we need to pray for others outside of the body of faith. Paul writes this in 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 2. He says this, First of all, then I urge that petition and prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for who? everyone, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness, godliness and diligently. This is good and it pleases God the Savior who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. He told us right there that, man, we need to be praying for everybody. In Galatians chapter 6, Paul speaks on bearing one another's burdens. Can I tell you that prayer is a powerful tool. It is a powerful thing that we have been given to go boldly into the throne room of heaven to talk directly to God but why don't we use it more as believers? I'm just speaking for my personal self too, man. We use it as a lifesaver, right? Whenever things get bad, we need to go pray. Whenever, whenever we get a bad doctor's appointment, we need to go pray. What would happen if we was prayed up before then? What would happen if we was prayed up before then? We didn't wait until we felt like we needed to pray, but we prayed because we were devoted to spending time with the Father. But after he talks about bearing one of those burdens, listen to what he says in Galatians 6. He says this, he wraps up about bearing each of those burdens with this. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially those who belong to the household of faith. He said, you need to be doing good and praying for all those lost people. They need to hear the gospel. But he says, you need to even be doing it more for your brothers and sisters. And the way you do that is through praying, through gathering, through doing life together and encouraging one Another is how we do that. But lastly, we need to do this. I'm almost there, y'all. You know, I know everybody's starting to look at you watch. I'm just kidding. Y'all don't do that because y'all don't wear watches. You're looking at your phones. But anyway, but listen. So the third thing. So we need to pray individually. We need to pray for others. But listen, here it is. We need to pray with each other. The only way we pray with each other physically is by being in the community. It's by being together. We see it here in these altars. A lot of times people come and pray with one another. James 5.16 says this, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in effect. Listen, I can't cast my burden on you if you don't bring the donkey. You're the donkey. Right? Okay, just, just kidding, just kidding. We're not going to call it a King James Bible donkey. Some older folks get that one. Alright, so anyway, but listen. But for us to be able to cast our burdens on one another, we've got to be there for one another. We've got to be able to pray with one another. We've got to say, what is your concerns? Listen, I love the digital age. I do, man. I got to share uh, the gospel this week about three different times on digital with over 200 men at a time just digitally. I love it. I'm glad that we have that. But listen to me. There's nothing like gathering together in a room full of believers. There's nothing like us being able to hug necks and shake hands and... I ain't going to go there. We, we can, we, there's nothing like praying with other people in the altar. There's nothing like... Listen, we were built to do life together. And what has happened, man, we've allowed something, a worldly circumstance to come in to the church. And, and I want you to hear me. It is real. I'm not, I'm not discounting anything that's going on in our world. I'm not saying it's not real. I know it's real and it affects some people really bad and some people that don't. But listen to me. We can't live in fear. Because fear is not a spirit from the Lord. We use good sense. That's the reason we shut down for about a month and done online only because we had a little breakout in, in our church family and we was trying to be cautious. There was no fear in it. We didn't shut down because we was afraid. We shut down because we was trying to be good stewards of, of our church family. But we cannot live in fear and not gather because we live in fear. We need it. We need it. We need it. Listen, Ecclesiastes 4.9 says two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up. But pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Listen, the reason we challenge you to do life together, 
The reason we challenge you to, to get to know each other is because, listen, when you start stumbling, can I tell you, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall spiritually, you're going to fall, you're going to fall mentally. It's just part as long as we're living in the flesh, we're going to have those moments of weakness. But just like Ecclesiastes says, but if you're walking out there by yourself trying to hand it on, can I tell you what, when you fall down, you're more than likely to stay down because nobody's there to help you up. But when you're doing life with others and walking with others, there's somebody there to know that, man, Chad, Chad wasn't there last week. Somebody needs to check on him. Chad hadn't checked in this week. Somebody needs to check on him. But if we're not doing life with other people, nobody's going to know. We're just going to think, well, they're just, they just happy you know, to be at home doing church online. And, but nobody knows. That's why I encourage you, if you're online, man, at least comment. That way we know you're here. We know, you know, we know you're there. Because, hey, trust me, I know every week by the comments, you know, who I, who I know is at least showing up and you're here. That lets me know they're still a part. You're, you're still there. But we've got to be vocal. So, these four things that we see the early church devoted to, I ask the question to you, are you devoted to those four things in your personal life? Listen, you must be intentional to make them happen. They're not just going to happen. You're just not going to start being part of the fellowship unless you're intentional to show up. You're not going to find people to do life with unless you're intentional to show up and speak up. You're not going to just want to get in God's Word every day. You've got to be intentional. And prayer, can I say, I think that's one we all need to be more intentional on. I think that's one we all need to be intentional on. But listen, this is what I know, and I'm almost there, y'all. We're fixing to hit this last, this last little bit uh, faster than the road runner running from Waii Coyote. Y'all ready? My younger kids are like, what's he talking about? All right. Uh, lots of Christians haven't devoted themselves to these things because they're too devoted to their self. Can I tell you, if you're going to be devoted to these things the early church was, it's going to take some of your time. Did you see that the other thing they said they were devoted to? I didn't, I didn't write down that. It said they were devoted to daily meeting in the temple and breaking bread together. They were devoted to doing it daily. Getting together, making sure they were doing life people, checking on people, loving on people, but getting together and doing that. So, if we get devoted to the Word, to fellowship, to doing life together in prayer, it will take time. But what would it change? What would it change? Is that, a, is that a fair question? If you say, okay, if I could devote myself to these four things, what would change? Boy, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the rest of these verses. It tells us right in the rest of the text. I ain't got to come up with nothing spiritual or my own opinion. It tells us right in the text. These are what would happen if we would all be devoted to these four things. Just these four things, y'all. You ready? Say yeah. yeah. Number one. Verse number 43 we see that people would be in awe on what's going on. We see that there'd be a difference in your life. You, you would start living different, start looking different. There'd be things and they'd be in awe. That's what it says. It says they were in awe of the miracles that were going on in verse number 43. People would be in awe. You know what happens when people start getting in awe of things that's going on spiritually in your life? They start asking questions, y'all. Why, why, you, why, you, why you do that? Why you don't talk like that anymore? Why are you spending more time at church now? Why I see you posting all this stuff on Facebook about all this religious stuff now? They get in awe. Number 44, listen, this is what it says. This is something the church needs. It says we would have all things in common. If the whole church started being devoted to those four things, you know what? We got all things in common, y'all. We're in the Word together. We're praying together. We're doing life together. You may say, well, I don't have nothing in common. I've, had, I've heard this said in the church before. Well, I don't feel like I got nothing in common with them people down there at the church. That's the reason we ain't coming no more. I just don't feel like there's nobody there that I got anything in common with. You start doing these four things, and guess what? We got four things in common. Four life-changing things that we've got in common. It will put all things in common. Verse 44, verse 45. Man, just gives us something in every verse. We would truly be able to help one another. Not just because someone would ask and tell us that they need help, but because we would know that they need help because we're doing life with them. I wouldn't have somebody have to call me and say, hey, is there any way y'all can help us with the power bill this month because we just, man, just Don lost his job and we don't know how we're going to pay it. You know what? If you're in life, doing life with somebody else, that group's going to know that Don just lost his job. And there's somebody going to step up and say, hey, y'all, we need to do something for them and see if we can't get a little help. I know they're going to be struggling. We'd be able to help one another better. Because let's just be real, some people, don't, some people won't ask for help. They'll be lost everything they had before because they let pride seek in before they ask for help. But if you're doing life with others, people's going to know they're going to be able to help you. 
in verse 46, this is what it says. We would want to get together more. It says, man, they wanted to get together daily. They wanted to be one another. Why? Because they have four things in common now. So guess what? We can meet together. We can talk about the Word of God. We can talk about what God did in my prayer life. I could care less if you like sports or like hunting or fishing or you like going and painting your toenails. It don't matter. Listen, if we devoted to these four things, we can get together. We can talk about, man, what's our family been doing this week? Where we went on vacation because we're doing life together. What I got out of God's Word. What God's teaching me in my prayer time. What is that? was man we could have hours on ends talking about things that we have in common but it's up to me and you to be devoted to the four things but then lastly this is the last one and then I'm done and I think it's one of the most important we start doing all these four things and you see what the last thing was that said would start happening it said the Lord added to the church daily not by convert from the First Baptist Church of Lula because they got mad at the preacher and wanted to come over here, and not because they got mad at Gillsville and they wanted to come over here. No, it said that he grew the church daily by those who were being saved. We get devoted to these four things and start living it out. Y'all, he'll start saving people. We've seen people get saved in here, but listen, I'm talking, I've told you before, it ain't, it ain't, this couldn't be a place where you have to bring them. I told you, if you won't share the gospel with them, bring them here, I'll share the gospel with them. But listen, it should be us going out and winning them to Jesus. And I promise you this, if you get devoted to these four things, you're going to want to go out and tell people about Jesus. They're going to see it. They're going to be in awe. And God can use you in a mighty way. So as Amber comes this morning, as we get ready for a time of response and closing, that made a lot of noise. So my easy questions this morning, right? Everybody likes easy questions, right? You like an easy test? I like easy test. I do. I liked easy test growing up. I like the bu- fill in the bubbles. You know, you make a pretty picture. Yeah? Yeah? Anybody with me? Yeah? Y'all don't remember them? Had to have a number two pencil. They get mad if you use a pen. So here's your four questions for every person in this room, every person watching online. That only you can answer. And listen, it's one thing to answer the question, to answer it truthfully, but it's another thing or what will you do about your answer? Because if your answer is the wrong answer, lined up to the Word of God. You know one thing I love about them number two pencils, Chad? The one thing I loved about them number two pencils, man, if you got on there and you circled in B, and then you thought about it for a minute, and you go, man, I think that's the wrong answer. You could turn that number two pencil around, there's a thing on the other side of it called an eraser. You could erase that answer and change it. This morning... If your answer to one of these is you're not devoted to that or not devoted as you should be, this morning is your opportunity to take that eraser out and change your answer. So this morning, the question to everyone in this room and everyone online, are you devoted to the Word? Are you devoted to your fellowship, wherever that might be? Are you devoted to doing life together with other believers? And are you devoted to prayer? If we get devoted to those, listen, if we just drop down to the last verse, that's worth it all to know that if we're devoted, that God will start saving people. Isn't there somebody in your life that you want to see give their life to Jesus? Ain't there a family member, a co-worker that you know is lost? Man, there's lost as last year's Easter egg and they're going to burn eternity in hell if God don't step in and do something. But listen, He wants to use you But you've got to be devoted. You've got to be the one to say, I will take a stand. I'm going to be devoted. I'm going to do what I can do. And I promise you this, listen, I don't think I'm asking a lot. I mean, just the four things, the early church. It's a picture of what the church should be today. Four things that we should be devoted to. And if we're devoted to those four things, man, the things that will happen, it amazed me as I read it this week and thought about it. They were just devoted to four, four things. And look what God did. Four simple things. Two of them's on your own, by yourself. Prayer and in the Word. Then the other two you've got to be really intentional about to get out and get involved. But this morning, this is, this is my prayer for everyone online, everyone in this room. I don't care if you're new with us or you've been with us for 50 years. This morning, you must ask yourself these questions as I did this week. I had to ask myself these questions. And think about it, y'all. I get preached this sermon before y'all get preached it. Are you devoted? And if the answer is not the right answer this morning, this is your opportunity to change it. These altars are wide open for everybody. 
in this room online. Your altar is right there in front of that camera. And we'd love to pray for you. Maybe there's some areas you need to be devoted in. We, we don't ask details unless you want to share, but we'd love for you to put devoted in the comments. And we will pray over you and pray that God in that area will help you be stronger and grow you as you determine today to be devoted. Let's pray together. Father, Lord, this morning you see every heart in this room. You see every heart in every living room, every workplace, every car. God, and you know, and God, just knowing, just seeing, just being real and seeing the facts from the early church in Acts and seeing the facts of the church in America today especially, that we can almost guarantee that most Christians, air quotation, Christians, are not devoted to these four things. For if they were, we would be seeing the same thing that we've seen in Acts chapter 2. God, I pray for every individual to the sound of my voice that right now in this moment that they would do a self-evaluation, that they would choose today. Lord, even in those moments that, that they don't want to, that today they would say, I'm going to be devoted, I'm going to be determined, and I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be devoted to the Word, getting in your Word more. To not just read the verse of the day, but actually get in and want to get something from you. I'm going to be devoted to my fellowship, wherever that is. I'm going to be devoted to being a part, to getting in, to serving together, to worshiping together, to just being together. But Father, I also want to be devoted to live life with other believers. And Father, I pray for those that don't feel like they have life. May they get involved in that fellowship and put the people that you want them doing life with right there. That they may walk together, they may go together and grow together. But Father, I pray for our whole church and for every church that's represented online and in this room. God, we all need to be more devoted to prayer, myself included. Lord, that's one this week that you really tugged on my heart again with. Father, may today be a day of choice that we say, I will be devoted. Knowing that we're going to fall sometimes, that life's going to happen, but just knowing that you'll meet us there should be enough want to for us to get up and go there. Holy Spirit, Convict and change hearts this morning. If you're online, like I said, we just want you to put the word devoted if there's something the Holy Spirit spoke to you. If you're in this room, we're fixing to stand together. And I want to invite you just to come. You don't, you're not confessing anything to me. You're not responding to me or this church. You're responding to the Holy Spirit. But I truly believe that when you step out of an aisle, that you're telling God, I'm serious about my commitment. But you can do business with God right where you're at. But my prayer for you is you just be obedient to what God is calling you to do. Father, I pray if there's one under the sound of my voice that they don't know you as their personal Savior. God, if they have religion and not relationship, that today they would come grab me by the hand, Brock by the hand, Chad by the hand, or somebody by the hand this morning up here. And we can show them through God's Word how they can start a relationship with you. But Father, for every believer that's under the sound of my voice, May we choose to be devoted more in every area that you've called us to today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. You don't, you don't wait. You need to come pray. You come pray. Somebody will pray with you this morning. Make the commitment to the Lord today on what He's calling you to do. As we sing. I've carried a burden for too long on I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go.
Amen. Well, if you're glad you gathered this morning, say amen. 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 If you're glad you gathered online with us, punch amen in the comments there so we can celebrate with you. I want to ask everybody just take a seat. We're going to get ready to take up our tithe and offering this morning as the band comes back up, ready to end us off in worship this morning. I pray this morning that, uh, man, this has been a blessing to you through the worship. Man, wonderful time of worship. Amen. Just a wonderful time being in the Lord's presence. Uh, we would like to say if you're new with us, we'd like to give you a free uh, digital gift. It's some, a whole bunch of Bible studies and things totally free to you. All we need you to do is simply text us uh, the word new. Just N-A-W to 678 622 and we will send you a link to that. We're not going to blow your phone up, I promise you. I'll send, we'll send you like two messages just with some links more about liberty and a link to your free gift. And then if you've got questions, we'd be glad to correspond with you, but we don't blow up your phone. If you didn't get that number and you're in the room, uh, it's in the bulletin. You can just write on the front of the bulletin. If you're online, I'm sure we're putting that in the comments uh, for you to text that. But we'd love for you to do it. So as we're preparing our hearts this morning to give, before we do that, the way we do that right now, if we're in the room, uh, we got the white buckets. They should be a white bucket somewhere on your pew. Just pass that down uh, when we start the next song and then put it on the ends. And then we'll have somebody come by and pick those up before the song is over. I did want to give you just a couple of other announcements we've got going on. This past Wednesday night, we kicked back off our Doror student ministry, our Liberty Kids, and our and our young adult class. So, uh, man, if you want to be a part of that, we have a meal at 6.15 and all the classes start around 6.50. So come and be a part of that. And adults, you say, well, what's there for us to do? Serve. I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, just saying. I, I think, uh, yeah, serve. That's, you know, I think that's part of, you know, fellowshipping. All right? Uh, that's free. I ain't going to charge y'all no extra. You ain't got to put an extra dollar in the plate for that one. All right. But listen, but also we got coming up, if you got a teenager, a middle schooler, high schooler, we got our Disciple Now weekend coming up on March the 12th. 14th. Look at that. I remembered. Cost is just $25. Uh, so you got to have that in. Check the bulletin. All that is in the bulletin. Got to have that in the next couple weeks to get everything set up with that. If you got any questions, you can see Brock on that. So let me let me pray over our offering as we get ready to bring our tithe to the storehouse and give our offering. Then we're going to stand and hey, let's be loud. Let's let the church be loud and worship on this last song. I don't even know what song. What song are we doing? Lion and the Lamb. Sounds like one we can get loud on. All right. So let me pray for us, and then we'll stand one more time in worship, and then uh, have a little time of fellowship before we go. So, Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we're just thankful for this time, and we pray as we're fixing to give, Lord, and bring our tithes to the storehouse and give our offering. May we give with a cheerful heart. And, God, may we just remember how blessed we are. And, God, may we be obedient to give what you call us to give. And may we as a church be obedient in using every cent for you, the upbuilding of your kingdom and to make Jesus known all around the world. Father, I pray again for every person in this room. May we truly take the heart. May we go back this week and read at the end of Acts chapter 2 and keep asking ourselves, was I devoted to that today? Because we know it's a daily decision to pick up our cross and follow you. Father, be with our time in this next few minutes as we just worship together one more time before we go out into the mission field. And may, may we go out and light it up for King Jesus through our lives this week. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You can pass your buckets and stand with us and we're going to sing one more time. <coughs>
make way before. 